Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Steak Pizziola. That's right, I've been waiting all summer to do this dish because you need these real vine-ripened sweet tomatoes. But we'll talk about those later. For now, let me show you how to make this incredible summer steak dish. All right, so the first step here, we're gonna season our steak. I'm using beef tenderloin. Those are like four ounce medallions. So I'm gonna generously season both sides with salt and pepper. Now I'm using tenderloin because it's very tender and buttery. Works great for this, but you can really do this with any steak cut. New York strip, ribeye, top sirloin, all of those will work. So once the meat's seasoned, we're gonna head over to the stove where I have a skillet on high heat with a little bit of olive oil in there. And we're gonna go ahead and sear these medallions for about two minutes per side. And the reason you have to use high heat is because we need the outside to brown and sear before the inside overcooks. So make sure that pan is really hot before you start. And so a few minutes later, your medallion should look like this, or close to it. You can make yours look as good as mine, but please don't make them look better. So once the meat is seared, and like I said, about two minutes per side, we're gonna go ahead and remove those to a plate and reserve them while we finish the sauce. So into the exact same pan, we're gonna throw a handful of mushrooms along with a little chunk of butter. And we're gonna brown those mushrooms. And of course, with mushrooms, that liquid's gonna leak out. It's gonna deglaze that beautiful caramelized meat fond from the bottom of the pan. Of course, we're gonna add a little pinch of salt here, which you know brings out the water. So that's gonna help. And by the way, I never get tired of the fact that what many people would consider just ugly, burned on junk at the bottom of the pan can turn into such a beautiful sauce. I think there's a metaphor there, or not. And we're gonna saute those for about five or six minutes until they're beautifully golden. And right there, I was looking at them thinking, those are beautifully golden. I'm gonna go ahead and add my peppers. All right, at this point, I wanna turn the heat down to medium. So I have a handful of green Italian frying peppers. That's a sweet pepper. I also had some red bell pepper I diced up. Any kind of pepper works, of course. So I'm gonna to toss those in. I'm gonna give those a stir and I'm gonna cook those about two minutes. I just wanna soften them slightly. I definitely want them to keep a little bit of their texture. I don't want them falling apart. So I cook those for a couple minutes and then I'm gonna add a whole bunch of crushed garlic, finely minced garlic. That only cooks for one minute. Do not brown the garlic. All right, don't walk away. And when it looks like that, we're gonna hit it with the wine. Any kind of drinkable white wine will work. Don't even think of using cooking wine. All right, so dump in the wine. You can raise the heat up to medium high at this point because we want most of that wine to evaporate. So we're gonna cook that for about three minutes. I'm also gonna hit it with a pinch of dry oregano. All right, stir that in. And when you see that wine is getting kind of low and it's kind of thinking about being almost all evaporated, then you're gonna go ahead and add in your fresh diced tomato, also known as tomato concasse. And all that is is fresh tomato that's had the skin removed and the seeds removed and then finely chopped. By the way, the next video is a demo on how to do that. So stay tuned for that. And also, if you're thinking, hey, those don't look like vine ripened, super awesome summer tomatoes, they're kind of pink. That's actually the color of the tomato. It's a variety of brandy wine, and the center is kind of pinkish. But rest assured, those were incredibly, incredibly fragrant and sweet and amazing. So we're gonna stir those in. This is gonna come back up to a simmer, and we're only gonna cook it for a few minutes. Pizziola is one of those tomato sauces that does not simmer for hours and hours. So I'm only gonna simmer that for like three or four minutes. And during that very brief simmering time, I'm gonna add a couple secret ingredients, some red chili flakes to heat things up a little bit, and a tiny, tiny splash of balsamic vinegar to balance the sweetness and acidity. It's also gonna deepen the color, make it even more gorgeous. All right, we're gonna stir that in. And then to finish, we're gonna add a healthy dose of freshly chopped oregano. I know we put the dried in there, but dry and fresh oregano, very different flavors, and I like both in this. So I'm gonna throw that in, give that a stir, and of course, please, for your sake and the sake of your guests, give this a taste and adjust the seasoning, salt mainly. And then the real final step, add your steak back in, and when the steak is warm through or cooked to your desired doneness, you're ready to eat. Now, if yours were just about cooked all the way through, you just need to toss them in this sauce briefly until they warm up, all right? But mine were still pretty rare, so I just smothered them in the sauce and let them simmer there for like two minutes, and they were perfecto. And of course, I'm just going by feel because I'm, you know, a pro. But if you want to use a thermometer, go ahead. And that steak pizziola is ready to serve. Oh, sure, we could just throw it on a plate. It would be amazing. But we're going to take it up a notch, literally. 
To add some height, we're going to put some toast on the plate. And then in addition to the height, we're going to add a thin slice of mozzarella before we put the steak down. Recent studies have shown hiding cheese underneath the steak increases the diner's pleasure up to 34%. Hey, the numbers don't lie. All right, so that's optional, but a very, very nice little touch, I think. And then spoon over the sauce. Maybe garnish with a little more oregano. Mine was actually flowering, so I put a little bit of green bud on the top. So pretty. And that is done. A steak pizziola. Let's get into this. Oh my God. So perfect. Just the steak and the sauce would be a huge treat. But then they cut down into that crouton and discover that little thin piece of melty mozzarella cheese. Come on. Are you kidding me? You're going to be a legend. And really, why else would you watch this channel other than to steal my ideas and become a legend in the kitchen? So I hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.